Good morning from the Rain Dance Ranch. It is October 4th, Phoenix, Arizona. It was real nice earlier and uh, it's like 11 o'clock now and I'm sweating. And uh, it's still in the 90s. And I just kind of have been organizing and condensing and getting my plants ready uh, with uh, my containers for the winter. And uh, it looks like we're going to stay in the 90s until Friday if that holds true, that prediction holds true. Um, but uh, I'm thinking Saturday I'm going to move all this stuff out, which is good because uh, most of this stuff is in the shade uh, for most of the day, except for in the mornings and later in the afternoon. Um, and a lot of them are newly transplanted, so this will give them time to get established in their pots before I put them out front. And the reason I'm not establishing them out front, which I would have no problem doing, is because it's really, really hot out front and I get blasted with sun all day and it's going to be next to a brick and concrete block house so there's going to be a lot of heat coming off the house and the, the ground and the rocks <laughs> um, plus it'll be nice to have them maybe slightly more grown out before I put them out as well. And it's easier for me to take care of them if I've got them all jumbled up like this, so. Um, and then also, because I am trying to get set up, I need to set up my infrastructure for handling plant start sales. So I've got these table things that I built um, with two by fours and blocks. And this one, the two by fours are kind of narrowly, let's see if I can pull this out. I did not plan this very well as usual. You can kind of see they're real close together and that works great for the heavier things. Um, because these crates, that I'm using are not very solid. <laughs> They're real good for light things, but they need to have some kind of support under them for these heavier plants. Like you could do like a batch of like real light plant plugs kind of thing like this in these without having, you know, that solid support underneath. Um, so, uh, this is my, one of my tables that I use to sort of process things and let things grow on and all that stuff. And that was my original intention when I put this here. Um, I do keep stuff up here and work up there at those tables. And it's nice to be able to transfer stuff over here and they're in the shade for a lot of the day over here just from the roof without having an actual shade structure. Um, although I am going to be putting a shade structure up here um, just to keep the area even cooler in the summer so I can just do a lot more with this space in the summer. And then in the winter I can put something up here that will help keep keep it warmer for the frost sensitive plants in Phoenix you tip a lot of plants do not need you do not need to worry too much about them I mean certainly there are some but a lot of plants just if they're on a patio or like next to a house they tend to handle the frost a lot better so anyway so over here I did another table across the way this one gets full sun and um, 
I think actually there is at some part of the year there will be some shade here, but it's only for a short part of the day. I don't, I can't remember. Last year I remember the shade moved and it did funky things and I can't remember exactly where the cutoff was. But if I do want it in full sun, I can move it back a little bit, back this way. Doo -doo. Um, but I like it to be in proximity to the other table so that if I need to move stuff from this shady spot over in here, I can do that easily. And plus I like to, you know, it's a good idea to have all of your plants together. So I might do another one of these out here in this area, just beyond here. Um, but one of the things I like is that I could, if I have them spread out further, these pieces of wood, then I can put these crates down. Now I got these crates for free from a juice company and um, they have more of them. They're, they're real crappy. <laughs> they fall apart real easily, like look at this. But they're really useful for various things. I, I just, and you can use these for, um, if you've got plant starts that bunnies, bunnies like to eat plants, like young plants, and they may not eat the mature plant. So you could use this as a cloche in the garden, which that's a real problem for me. So, And they're just kind of nice to have around to move things around in. And I use them when I'm collecting weeds and uh, all kinds of things. You could even grow in them. I was thinking about trying to make some grow actual filling them up with soil, like maybe putting burlap or something. And then you get the, uh, the air pruning factor. Um, plants like to grow in stuff like this actually, that has air uh, holes on the side. Um, but with this, I, I know invariably I'm going to be having heavy things that are not going to, this is not gonna hold up real well. If these were like better quality, like those crates that, that you get, like the milk crates and the soda crates and stuff, like those would be great for this. But you know, you either gotta buy them or come across them somewhere. Um, and I just haven't come across them and I don't really wanna spend that money on those right now. But eventually that would be a very worthwhile investment to get some solid crates. Um, but hey, I'm happy working with what I got. These were free. So what I need to do is see if I have another long board or get some of my short pieces and put a third board all along here. But like I said, uh, if I have in the future, if I'm, when I do have my little lightweight plant starts, they could certainly sit on this very easily. And I, I may or may not even need these particular crates, although I'm going to be experimenting with different options, but like these, these are the typical seating trays that most people have there. They go from here to there. So I don't know. They're a little over two feet, I guess, or about two feet, about 24 inches. And the, these are fine on there. So let me pick that up and show you what that would look like. So if I've got like my trays of petunias, they could easily, I mean, I could even put these boards slightly closer together. And then I can put all of my starts here uh, while I'm processing them, uh, putting them or selling them or whatever I'm doing with them. But, you know, you just can't keep these under the lights forever. And they don't, as they get larger, yeah, the lights, you can't, you know, you grow them with the lights right on top of them. And then if you need to keep them in the lights, then you got to move them into another shelf where the lights are further away. Um, and they just kind of get burnt and yellow a little bit. 
and I think ultimately they're fine. That happened to my tomatoes. These petunias did good under the lights, but, um, but you know, I mean, you gotta at some point move your stuff out to another area, and that is the conundrum for growers who are selling plugs and plant starts and things like that. You've got to have room to process them. Like, it's real easy to put up a shelf with, you know, three or four levels of lights and you can get a lot of plants just with a few lights on a few shelves. But then you need to do something with them afterwards if you can't move them right away. And I'm hoping to get to the point where I can move my plant starts quicker. Um, but there's always gonna be a need to have space like this to process them or let them grow on and you know, I can let them grow on, up pot them like here. I up, these are some of my plugs that I was trying to uh, do like a beta test with, but I'm not gonna be able to get them to people. Um, I'll spare you the details for another week and they just really needed to be up potted. So I'm gonna be giving these away actually as like samples. Um, and hopefully in another week, they'll look a little better too. So um, that's fine, but they just needed to be up potted. Whereas, and these are gonna be up potted too. So I just need to, I'm about to run out of soil and then I need to process some more soil. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's my stopping point. And then this whole area needs to get, <laughs> figured out. I really would like to have some kind of a brick pathway coming down here. I mean, there's nothing wrong with these pebbles. It's just that I have the bricks and I don't really want to put them anywhere else for now. Um, the thing that I like about these, even though I have the pebbles and they work fine, is that this area does kind of collect a little bit of water and when you need to walk out it tends to get a little slushy in here during rain which you know at one when i first moved in we had a grip ton of rain and then nothing for a whole year and then this last monsoon season it probably rained 30 days in like a month and a half like i am not kidding some days were light but most of them were heavy enough to wear <laughs> And that's why I started putting these bricks here because every time we needed to take the garbage out or I needed to go out to the garden, this area, I would just be sloshing around. So it kind of makes a bridge and, and then the, uh, the water soaks in and runs down and, and it's fine. Uh, I, I'm actually really pleased with what happened with the water here on the property. It seems like we have good saturation and the water runs off without causing too many problems. Um, just like I said, this area, we need to walk in it. So, you know, it, it, it soaks in within a couple hours once it stops raining. But if it's raining a lot, it, it does get to an oversaturation point. But then here I've got my water collection here it's very high tech and um <laughs> it works pretty good except for i don't have a plan for overflow and i don't have enough of these right now i need to get more and i'm not sure if we want to buy more of these i'm probably going to just get like two more of these garbage cans because there are good things about using these garbage cans but I'm thinking about getting um, some kind of those regular good old-fashioned blue water collection uh, barrels, those plastic ones. I think they're like 80 bucks at Home Depot or something. I don't know. And everybody's like, you can get those for free on Craigslist. And I'm like, I have never seen them for free, so I don't know what you're talking about. But maybe that's in other parts of the world where people aren't so concerned about collecting rain but they're not widespread here in the phoenix area in terms of being used or free um 
Plus, I kind of like the idea of buying them new just because I'm concerned about what people might have put in them prior. And, you know, a lot of times people, and I know, and it's fine, and I get it. <laughs> people just make assumptions, and so they say, yeah, it's only ever had water in it. You know, but it had paint thinner in it or something at one point. Or something paint thinner got in there. I don't know. You know what I mean? Who knows? So, there's pluses and minuses. Um, and, uh, I mean, I don't know. Somebody could have dipped a paintbrush with paint thinner in there or something. And then it's contaminated. Who knows? And would that really contaminate it that bad? But, still, I just like the idea of buying those new ones. So that's going to take a little time to get those. But really, I need to do something with the ground because the overflow here, it makes like a little pond area, which I would love to turn this into a pond, but I need to be able to manage my barrels. And I got to tell you, I really love watering with these barrels. Like, this is what I do. Um... I mean, I almost never use the hose, at least right now I'm not because I've had so much rainwater at my disposal. And it, you, you know, and I know that when I'm actually using the hose, I probably use a lot more water too. Um, but I've got one more barrel after this. I don't know if you can see this, it's about a little less than halfway full. That one's empty. And, um, so I just take my watering can. I would like a watering can that's slightly larger than this little elephant guy, but not too much bigger. I have another one that's like huge and I want one that's like in between. When I'm creating my own products, I'm gonna create something like this elephant that's slightly bigger than him and slightly smaller than those big honker ones that you usually get. But with the stuff that I'm planting, um, right now with my starts and stuff, I probably fill this up maybe five or six times and then come over and water everything. Um, this guy, I don't think I gave him any water and I might, he actually, I think I gave him some yesterday. I'll just give him a little more. Um, here we'll give the, the bunny food. This is my bunny food, personally. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to keep this alive all winter and see what happens in this spring. Or maybe it'll just die off as soon as it gets cold, I don't know. Um, so, but I, I find it really enjoyable and easy and to come over and just dip into my rainwater and then go water. I actually love this system. Um, ultimately, when I get bigger, I'd like to have some kind of a hose connected to the barrels when I have a lot more to water so I can use the rain water that way um, and hopefully I'll be able to collect more but um, for what I got going on right now that's real enjoyable I, I really actually prefer that to the hose so anyway so this is my new organization it's still in progress and so I will make another video uh, probably once I get these plants out front and I'm gonna tighten up the hat batten down the hatches over here and and it just everything is just so <laughs> uh, I tried to do stuff over the summer but if you come out you do what you got to do, you move a few things around, you pick a few weeds, and you're done for the day because it is miserable out here in the summertime. And that's actually why I want to put, see that st shade structure there? That's my Arizona greenhouse and that's Illuminate. And I want to have Illuminate going across here and maybe do some more areas with Illuminate going back that way so that it's it's actually a lot more tolerable to be in in like an, an uh, uh, like a 
shaded area that's like surrounded by that alumina, it deflects a lot of the heat. And so I really want to have that all tightened up by next summer as well so that I can actually be out here doing things. Because in the summertime, like you have to, you, you have to get up at 530 and you have like one hour where it's even remotely tolerable. And then at, like by 637, it's like you're about to have a heat stroke at seven o'clock in the morning. In fact, one time I did have a heat stroke at about eight o'clock in the morning. I had a racquetball class that started, I believe at seven. And so we got done around eight. And I just remember it was always hot as heck by the time that class was done. And one day <laughs> I had a heat stroke and it turned out that that was like this one record hot day in, that we had the people still have t-shirts I can't remember what it was it was like 123 or 124 degrees it was like <laughs> I was like yeah I was dying by 8 a.m on on that record heat day um anyways so so yes the infrastructure is coming along and I can't wait to get this area all re all established and finished off i gotta get all that grass out and and do something with the ground over here i'm gonna be putting pebbles down on top of cardboard or something or i might just put wood chips down there i don't know what i'm gonna do exactly but this is gonna be a major work area all along here i just need to get it ready and it's just too hot still so in another week this is going to be done this week. I want to get those bins going. I need to put more soil in and uh, I've got to up pot some of this stuff. So yeah, that's what's going on here at the Rain Dance Ranch. And also be sure to check out my videos about the project I'm doing up at the Horny Toad in Cave Creek. I'm redoing their planters with beautiful succulents inspired by Design for Serenity, Laura Eubanks on YouTube, who lives in San Diego. Um, I've really, really learned a lot from her, the uh, things that I just wasn't even aware of. <laughs> so I'm very grateful for her, even though I've had <clears throat> a lot of experience in landscape design. I'm not uh, professionally, I'm not trained but even when they train you for that stuff, I don't, <clears throat> I find that I, I majored in architecture when I was younger in college and took classes and stuff. And really there's just so much that you don't, they just don't tell you or can't tell you that you have to learn when you start actually working in the field. So I'm just eternally grateful for Laura Eubanks. So many people on YouTube have really just opened my eyes in the last three years, once I decided that I really want to get in back into doing plants. Um, I majored in business thinking that when my kids grew up, I'd try to get a job working at, as a manager for somebody somewhere doing something. I don't know what. But once the kids grew up, I just whew, went right back into the plants. <laughs> and um, anyways... Thanks for stopping by, sharing my story, and uh, or listening to my story, following my story as I go along building this this business uh, here at the Rain Dance Ranch. Remember, when it rains, go out and dance. <laughs>